workflows. One of the great things about CRM4 is that it can automate a lot of the necessary but mundane facets of doing business. For example, you might have been handed a list of leads that your company has generated from a trade show or a seminar. Now when you enter these into CRM4, you might decide that it would be nice to email the leads to say thank you. And that's enough of a time waster even if there's only 10 leads, but what if there's 100 or 1,000 or 10,000 of them? Well, thankfully CRM comes to the rescue since it's actually these tedious manual things that we can use workflows to take care of for us. But I will admit up front that this is only one simple example of what a workflow could be used for, since it's a powerful tool and there's countless scenarios where you could use workflows in your company to automate practically anything that you could think of. So in Outlook, we'll come over to the left here, we'll expand Microsoft Dynamics CRM, we'll click on Settings, and over on the right here, we'll click the Workflows hyperlink. Now, let's start with the example that I gave you guys a minute ago, where we want all leads entered into the system to have an automatic email sent out, thanking them for their inquiry. Well, obviously here our window is blank. We don't have any workflows by default, so we'll click on the new button. Now the first thing we'll need to do here is to provide our workflow with a name. So we'll call this one email new leads. And in the entity drop down box here, you'll find that there's a whole lot of different types you can choose from and you'll no doubt easily find what it is that you're looking for. But we're after leads at this point, so we'll select lead. And for the type here, we're gonna base this on a new blank workflow, which is the default, but do note that we could base this on a template if we had one. So we'll leave the default here at new blank workflow and we'll click OK. Now this will fire up a new window where we're able to build our workflow. Now at the top here, we can see the name of our workflow has been passed in from the previous screen, email new leads. The entity type is a lead and we're going to publish this as a workflow, although we could choose to create a new template from here if we like. Now, as soon as our workflows are created, we can make them available to run on demand, which simply means that a user who has the permissions are able to start this workflow, or we could run it as a child workflow, meaning that this workflow is designed to be run inside other workflows. So we're going to choose to run this workflow on demand that way we're able to let our users run it manually if they need to. And over on the right here, we can set options for automatic workflows. Now automatic workflows, as the name suggests, are designed to start automatically without user intervention and they can be triggered to run when a specific event or a condition occurs. Such as, let's say every time an activity is assigned to you, you want to receive an email letting you know about it. Well, that's a good example of using an automatic workflow. So here within these five boxes, we can configure automatic workflows to run when one or more of these events occurs. So if a record's created, and that record will be a lead since that's what we're working here with. So if a record's created and it's a lead, then that's gonna trigger this workflow to run automatically since this box here is checked. However, we could also choose to trigger this workflow if a lead's record status change, or it's assigned to someone, if any of its attributes change, or if it's deleted. Now down the bottom of this window here is where all of the smart stuff happens, and this is where you as the administrator are able to create a rule, if you like, to tell CRM exactly what it is that you want done when, in this case, a lead is created in CRM. So we'll click on the add step button here and this will show us a new menu and we've got quite a few options here and we'll talk more about some of these options shortly but for now the option that we're looking for is just create record. Now in this description field here we're going to enter in a description we'll say send email to new lead and in the drop down box here we'll choose email. Now we'll click on the set properties button and we'll be presented with a new window where we can enter in the details of the email that we'd like to be sent to the new lead once it's created. Now, I'm not gonna worry about filling in all of these fields here since anyone has used email before 
and has worked through these videos with us should by now recognize most of these fields. But we will fill in the from field here. And since I'm logged on using the administrator account right now, we'll set this email to come from me, which is the domain administrator, and we'll click on OK. Now in the subject field, we'll enter in a subject. And for our lab purposes here, we're just going to say, you are a new lead in CRM4. Although, if this were a production environment, you'd probably say something like, thank you for your inquiry, or something more professional. And finally, in the body of the email, you could write anything you like, but we're simply going to say, welcome to Winstructor. And finally, down the bottom here, I'm going to set the owner of this record, and we'll set it to ourselves, a domain administrator again, and we'll click on OK. Now, once you've filled in everything you need here, we'll need to click on Save and Close at the top. And again, one more time here in our workflow window. And there we can see our saved workflow, but I will point out that it's not yet working on our system since in the status column over here, you'll notice that it has a status of draft. So if we're absolutely sure that we have set this up correctly, then we'll highlight our workflow in the list and then click on the publish button. And then we'll click OK. All right. Now at this point, our workflow is live and it's ready to go. So let's test it by coming over here. We'll click on marketing and then we'll go to leads and we'll choose to create a new lead by clicking on the new lead button. Now I'm just going to give this lead a topic name of test and we'll create a lead for myself here. That way I can see if our email comes through. So I'm going to give it a name of domain and a last name of admin. We'll fill in the company of Winstructor and down here in the email field, we'll set that to administrator at crmlab.com. And now at the top, we'll click on save and close. Now, since we really haven't sent an external email, but rather an email to myself, this email will be found in CRM. Although in the real world, if we had have sent this to a real lead, then they'd be the one getting a copy of the email. So if we scroll down here and expand workplace and then expand my work and we'll select activities in here, we can see the new email has arrived, which was sent automatically to the email address supplied in the new lead that we added. So this is pretty cool since we didn't have to manually generate this email. It was just plucked out of thin air magically by CRM simply because we created a workflow to tell it to create an email and send it out when we add a new lead. All right, well, let's go back to workflows and we'll create another example here. This time, we'll make it a little more complicated since that first one was pretty easy. So we'll make this one really show off an example of the sorts of things that you can do with CRM workflows. So we'll click on the new button again and we'll make this workflow based on an opportunity. So we'll give it a name and I'm just gonna call it opportunity. Although you could certainly call it whatever you like, preferably something descriptive would be rather good. Over here on the right, we'll scroll down, we'll select opportunity, and then we'll click on OK. Now I'm just gonna leave most of the defaults here as they are so that when a record is created, our workflow will automatically perform the actions that we'll add in a moment. But we're also gonna check the on-demand box here so our users can run this workflow manually if they choose to. Now down the bottom, we'll click on the add step button and rather than choosing create record like we did in the previous example, this time we're gonna to choose to check for a condition. So in the description here, we're gonna say, analyze the opportunity. And then we'll click on this hyperlink here as this is what allows us to specify what conditions we wanna check new opportunities for. So up the top here, we'll hover our mouse over the select hyperlink here, which will display our drop down box. And from here, we'll choose opportunity. And then we'll click on the drop down box here to the right of our opportunity. And we can select from another long list of conditions to check. So I'm gonna choose estimated revenue. And then we'll move over to the right again. This time we'll choose is greater than. And then over in the right, we'll enter in a value I'm going to enter in a value of 1 million. And now at the top, we'll click Save and Close. 
And down here you can see we've now added in our if condition, if our opportunity has an estimated revenue of over a million, then we want to do something. So we'll click on add step again. And this time we're going to choose to assign the record. And in the description field here, we'll say assign to domain admin. And from the lookup icon over here, we're going to choose the domain administrator and then click on OK. Now we'll click on add step again. This time we'll choose conditional branch. And then down here, we'll click on the hyperlink so we can define our conditions. Now again, we're going to choose an opportunity. So we'll say if our opportunities estimated revenue is less than 1 million. And then we'll click save and close. And then we'll select the text here below our opportunity and click on add step again. And then we'll say assign record. And this time we'll choose to assign it to Bob. Now we'll click on OK. Now what we've created thus far is a highly automated workflow that will trigger whenever a new opportunity is created. Now if the estimated revenue in the opportunity is over $1 million, then it's going to be assigned to me. But if it's less than $1 million, then it's going to be assigned to Bob. Now even though this was a much more complex example than the first one we completed in this video, this doesn't even begin to scratch the surface of what you can really do with workflows. Since there's a practically unlimited number of scenarios you could develop with this tool, it's that good. Now if we wanted to add in more steps, such as to email us when an opportunity is created, or to escalate it to a manager if I haven't updated a record after 24 hours, we could easily do that as well by simply following the same process. So up the top here, we're going to click on Save and Close. And then we'll need to select our new workflow. And then click on the Publish button and then click OK. Now on the left here, we'll scroll up and we'll expand Sales and we'll select Opportunities. And now we'll choose to create a new opportunity and for the sake of our lab here, I'm just going to call this opportunity test. And we'll click on the lookup icon here next to our potential customer. And I'm going to choose ABC Corp from one of our previous videos and we'll click on OK. Now since we chose to trigger our workflow based on estimated revenue, we're going to set this to user provided. And we'll say that ABC Corp has an estimated revenue of $5 million. And now we'll click Save and Close. Okay, well here we can see that our opportunity has been created. And we can also see that this opportunity is assigned to me as it's viewable up here in My Open Opportunities. So let's double click on it to open it up. And then we'll go to the Administration tab. And I'm going to change the owner of this record from myself to another user. And we'll click on the lookup icon. And let's assign it to Bill Jackson here and we'll click on OK and then OK again. And now we'll click Save and Close. And you'll notice here that the opportunity has gone from my window here since this window here defaults to only showing my open opportunities. And since I passed it over to Bill, I don't have any to display. But if we select this drop down box here and just choose Open Opportunities, there's the opportunity back. But if we double click on it and then select the administration tab, we can see that Bill is in fact the owner. So let's close this record here. And rather than updating the owner back to myself, I could simply highlight the record and click on the Run Workflow button and then select our Opportunity Workflow that we created just a moment ago. We'll click OK, OK again. And remember, that since we chose to allow on-demand processing of this workflow by checking that box when we created it, this allows us to manually trigger our workflow. Now we'll select our drop-down box here again and change this to show only my open opportunities. And here's our opportunity back. And if we double click on it and then select the administration tab, I'm now the owner again since the estimated revenue for this record matches the rule that we set in the workflow.
Now on the left of this record here in our details menu, if we click on the workflows link in here, you're going to see all of the occurrences of when these workflows have been applied to this record. So you can see here that it's applied twice. The first time was automatically triggered when we created this opportunity and the second was a manual run just a moment ago. So in this video we've seen just how easy it is to create workflows within CRM4. Workflows can be as easy as pie to make but they can also get a little complex when you're making them depending on what it is that you want to trigger the workflow and what you want the workflow to automate for you. Workflows are definitely one of the most sought after features in CRM4 since automation is the buzzword of this decade and why would you want to do anything manually that could be done by CRM itself. So you can expect to be spending some time here within workflows designing and testing scenarios where you can make the most use of this automation but as you'll find out the investment in time now will make your CRM implementation hum along nicely leaving you with more time to concentrate on the other areas of your business that require you to do some real manual labor. So we hope you've enjoyed this video and would like to thank you for supporting Winstructor.